Give me a B. Give me an L. Give me a double O. Give me a D. Give me a B. O. W. L. Blood Bowl. Hey guys. I'm Angela and welcome to Hobby Night. And today for our painting video, I thought it would be really cool to go ahead and paint a miniature from Blitz Bowl because woo, there is a new season of Blitz Bowl coming out. There's also a new season of Blood Bowl coming out. And honestly, I'm actually pretty hyped about it. I really like the miniatures that they've shown for it. And I remembered I had these. Now, I'm not going to be painting one from this particular box though, because I bought a couple of other kits when I was, actually I got them as a gift during the holiday season. And one of them is the Undead team. And so I wanted to go ahead and paint up our star player, our quarterback of our undead team in some really cool sports colors because I'm not a huge sports person, but I do watch pro wrestling. And both of my favorite brands use the same color scheme. And I'm going to go ahead with that. And so let's get straight to it and we'll paint up our Blood Bowl or Blitz Bowl miniature. I went ahead and started off by priming my miniature in an appropriate color tone. In this instance, I went ahead and used Wraithbone because my color palette is going to be a little bit more on the warm side than the cool side. And I also wanted to make sure that my contrast paints worked really well with my primer, hence Wraithbone. And we're going to start by going ahead and applying Black Templar to the majority of his uniform because as I said in the intro, I am a wrestling fan and one of my favorite brands is both NXT and AEW, so I thought I would theme my color palette off of their colors, which is black, white, and gold. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and use black as our primary color being the majority of it, because I think we'll just get a really nice pop. And of course, these boys are undead, so we wanna kind of keep that spooky element in there. With the armor complete, I did get a little bit of paint in places that I didn't want to. So I went back with a little bit of Wraithbone and just did a slight cleanup to make sure that I had a fresh place to work with all of the additional colors we're moving on to. And the first of those colors that we're going to start with, because he's all cleaned up, his armor is looking fantastic, is Skeleton Horde. Because I want to go ahead at this point and get the most recessed areas of the miniature because the white and gold I really want to save for as close to last as possible so that I don't have to worry about getting any other colors in those areas. So we'll do the skeleton horde first and get our bony boy all painted up. Now you might notice on his other hand, not the one I'm working on now, but the one I'll switch to here in a second, there's a bit of a glove on his hand. And I hadn't noticed it when I was originally doing this, but I'll catch it a little bit later and do a little bit of cleanup there as well, because I do have a plan for what I'm going to do with that glove. I debated what I wanted to do for his boots because originally I thought maybe I would do it in black like I was doing for his armor. But then I remembered I had seen some older style uniforms for football back in the day where they had the brown leather like helmets, the soft ones. And I think they also had brown leather boots that would often go with that. And I really like that look. I like that kind of classic look. And I wanted to enhance that on this miniature. So I went ahead and painted his boots up in snake bite leather, as well as the belt that goes around his waist to keep his pants up. Angela, what, what is all this? Um, I, I might have a problem. I have too many minis to paint and not enough subscribers to encourage me to do it. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the videos. My quarterback is looking fantastic. The leather and skeleton portions are all dry and it is time to go ahead and finish up his uniform. And we're gonna start by going ahead and using Apothecary White 
because I did debate whether or not I wanted to do the white or yellow first. And I chose ultimately to do the white portion first because twofold actually. There is a chain on the front of his chest that I want to do in a little bit of yellow so that it stands out, but the flat armored portion beneath that I want to be in white and to avoid having to get the apothecary white over the nice crisp yellow, I went ahead and just did the white first. I thought it would be easier and honestly, it really was. I also ended up deciding to do the wings in a little bit of a different way that I'd originally planned, and that was by doing white on the webbing portion of the wings on both the knee pads and his helmet. And then we're gonna go ahead and put Yodin yellow over top the bone portions of the wings, and it really gets a very beautiful pop. Speaking of the Yodin yellow, we're gonna go ahead and move on to that final stage and basically do the rest of the miniature, because this is honestly the final color for this boy. We're gonna go ahead and do the knee pads, we're gonna do the trim on all of the armor portions, and then of course we're going to actually paint his pants in yellow as well to sort of tie that color back into the uniform a bit more than we had already. I will say that doing the chain and also the uh, bone portion of the helmet was probably the most nerve-wracking part of painting this miniature. My hands got a bit shaky and I had to take a few breaks on occasion because I wanted to make sure that I was delicate and clean so that I didn't have to do too much cleanup, but it also was just very, very thin and I was using a very fine tipped brush, but it came out beautifully and in the end, I really, really love the way that it looks. And with all of that nerve-wracking detail work now complete, he is finished and he is looking fantastic. But before I move on to the base of this miniature, I wanted to go ahead and paint up one of the accessories that came along with the kit, and that is this little ball that is used to represent who is carrying the ball when you're playing the game. And we're gonna go ahead and do this in three simple colors to keep it very, very easy. The first of which that we're going to use is Skeleton Horde because unlike a traditional football, there is a tiny, tiny skeleton crammed inside this little cage that he's in, and we want to paint him up thematically appropriate, so Skeleton Horde it is. Next up, because I wanted to differentiate the ball a little bit from the uniform of my quarterback, I went ahead and used the Basilicum Gray on the metal cage that is crushing that skeleton inside of it, and then we're going to take a bit of Wildwood Brown and use that on the tiny bit of earth that is attached to the base of the ball. Now, you might notice something a bit odd because there's a slot on this base that came with this guy and he doesn't actually have a slot, but there is no need to worry. I have a pretty easy solution that's honestly very easy to get a hold of. This is a brand of tape called washi tape. If you're not familiar with it, you can find it often in the craft supply section in most big box stores like Targets and Walmarts, I believe, carry it, but you can also go to like a Michaels or Craft Supply store and find it usually in the stationary section. But it's a really nice low tack tape that is, you can reuse a little bit, but it really works as a nice way to cover up this hole, give me a sort of flat surface for him to sit on and not actually hinder my base at all. So we're gonna just prime it up in a bit of wraith bone, one to help keep the tape on there, because while it is pretty stuck on. It is a little bit of a low tack tape sometimes, and so it can lift easily. So the priming helps make sure that our Sterling mud here, which we'll be using for our base to make a little bit of a pit for him to play on, will actually stick to it well. And as you can see, I just basically take this in kind of big globs. Now, my pot of Sterling mud, I believe is a bit of an older pot, and I think it's dried out more than this normally would look. But in this instance, it works really nicely in my favor and kind of looks like brownie batter being spread along the base, which I actually really like. I gave the base about an hour to dry just because I wanted to make sure that it was fully stuck on there before I decided to enhance it with a little bit of dry brushing. And we're gonna start by using Taleron sand because honestly, it just brightens this mud tone up a bit and adds a nice warm hue, which I think will go with my skeleton very, very nicely. We really want to push this color a bit because I am going to actually add another color on top of this to further bring out some detail and 
honestly, it works really, really great. We're going to go ahead and use a bit of Tyrant Skull, which is a dry paint that Citadel makes, meaning you don't need a whole lot of it on your brush, even less than you normally would because it is a low moisture paint. And we're just going to lightly go in a lot of different directions to cover the entire base and get a really nice effect. But we're not finished with it because I wanted to go ahead and make it look like he was actually on a pit of, you know, the field that he was playing on. So we're going to take a little bit of Ceramite White and draw one line going across and then a small little tick. Because if you've ever seen a Blood Bowl or Blitz Bowl field, they have these little lines on the edges and I wanted to capture that. And it came out really, really good. Little crooked, but, you know, Zombie was just a little lazy that day when he was making it. And this is the point where you might be going, wait a minute, you've finished your base. Shouldn't you be telling us that you've finished it and you love it and it's all good and you, you know, we're ending the video? Not this time. This time I thought I wanted to enhance the black tone that I had put on his armor because honestly it was looking a little flat. So I take a bit of Necron compound because, I mean, we want to make this look a little chipped, a little worn. He's playing a combat sports game. It shouldn't be pristine, fine, clean armor, especially not as an undead player. So the Necron compound gives us a really nice effect on the armor. And then because I had done the metallic tone on the armor, I was looking at the yellow hue that I had done in corporation with the color palette as well. And I wasn't super satisfied with how it was looking anymore. So I took a bit of our Cryptek armor shade and went back over it in just the portions that were the metal and like hard portions of his uniform. We don't want to do this on the pants that I want to maintain the brighter yellow, but this will give us a really nice metallic sheen over top of our miniature. And that will finally finish him off and make him the true star quarterback of my undead team that he is meant to be. And after a little bit of extra washing and dry brushing, he is complete and Mark Calloway is looking pretty good. I really am happy with how he came out. Honestly, I can't wait to do the rest of the team like this. And with that undead set that is coming out for the Blood Bowl new season, I'm probably going to thematically do them like this guy because honestly, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time with it. I can't wait to do up the coin and like the other little token thing that came with the box because there's a couple of other like loose things that come with the um, box for the game and everything. And I can't wait to do those up as well. Totally on theme, obviously. And just, I'm really pleased with the base on this mini for how simple it is. I, oh, it just came out great. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Let me know if you guys are Blood Bowl or Blitz Bowl players. And if you're excited for the new season below, what would you guys do for your color schemes for your teams? And I will see you guys next week for another news video and another hobby video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.